No game coming up this Saturday, but we still had a Frank Solich show on the Ohio IMG Sports Network on Monday morning at Donato's. I'm Russ Eisenstein, the voice of the Bobcats. We'll slice it up for you now. The Solich show slice after Ohio's 42 to 21 loss at Western Michigan. The Bobcats are four and five and are two and three on the season. Up next, Buffalo on a Bobcat blackout night at Peden Stadium coming up on November the 5th. Here are Frank Solich's comments in our Solich show slice on Bobcat TV. Uh, just general thoughts on uh, what happened on Saturday against the Broncos. Yeah, well, um, you know, they're a very good football team, so we uh, had to play well to, uh, to win, and that's obviously the way it is in, in the MAC uh, right now. A lot, of, a lot of good football teams in, in the MAC. Uh, and we did not play well, particularly uh, across the board. You know, special teams um, was not up to par, except for Mitch. You know, he, uh, he punted the ball he really, did. really well. Probably one of his better days of punting. And, and we did cover punts uh, well. They had a negative one in punt returns. And, and um, so that phase of the game, you know, stood solid for us. Uh, defensively, you know, we really played well at times. And um, the problem with that is playing well at times uh, is not good enough, you know. Uh, and, you know, they won the big and explosive play battle. And, and so uh, when that happens, that's, that's tough to overcome. Even though we won the turnover ratio by one, you know, we, we still were not able to, to uh, uh, hang in there because it just, we just allowed them to make too many big and, and explosive uh, plays on us. Um, offensively, you know, we were capable of moving the, the ball, but, but we put ourselves in a hole so much that it was tough. You know, the first series uh, we had, we had a drop pass that would have kept us on the field and kept our drive um, uh, going. Second series was, um, was tough. We uh, had a holding call. Third series, we had a chop block call. Fourth series, we were starting like on our own six yard line. And so while all those things were occurring, um, you know, they had a few explosive plays, and, and uh, pretty soon it's 21-7, and you're fighting from, from behind, you know. Um, so that, um, that, you know, that that's continues to bother us a little bit from the offensive standpoint. Instead of having to make first and tens, uh, you know, you have to make first and twenties uh, mm -hmm. way, way too often, and generally that's not, not going to happen. We have a really good leadership on our team in terms of our captains that don't let our team get too focused on anything long term. It's way out in front of us. They're really good about keeping the team focused on the task at hand. And when you have two captains that are each returning conference players of the year, that's just a different level of experience than, than truly any team in the country has. And so we're very fortunate to have that. I give them just a great deal of credit of what they've been able to do with our team and for our team and leadership of our team. Um, and so it's something that we'll look forward to relying on them to keep doing that the rest of the way for us. And Ohio is hosting the Mid-American Conference Volleyball Tournament uh, this year. Uh, it makes sense. Best environment in the MAC, the winningest program in the MAC, best building in the MAC. Uh, it all uh, should add up to a fun time and something that's good for the program to host the MAC tournament. It is. It's a wonderful opportunity to host a conference tournament. It brings it brings some challenges. Also, sure. I've been at a different school where you hosted the conference tournament before, and it's a little different in that when you're on the road, you're kind of just isolated. It's your team. You're just focused on the task at hand. You need to make sure when you're at home that we don't get distracted by a lot of other things that are, that are going on around us. Um, but what a, just a great environment to be able to host a conference tournament. Uh, we have such great fans, loyal fans, a great number of fans, and just to be able to compete for something that is as important as a conference championship and to be able to do it in front of our fans that's just a great opportunity for us three weeks left and as we've taken a look at it just based on how the numbers are to get to bowl eligibility is six but but realistically this year seven might be where you need to get to yeah um, yeah I agree your, your thoughts just from that standpoint on where that puts you here for the final three weeks of the year because if seven's going to be where you're going to need to get to you're going to have to win out right and um, you know certainly they're uh, they're all winnable games uh, I, I think anytime you step on the on the field in the MAC conference uh, either team uh, is talented enough to, to win the game it comes down to execution and and um, you know playing smart football and just making plays and um, we're certainly capable of uh, doing that and and uh, we need to do it at a at a higher level than than what we've been doing it and 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 not shoot ourselves in the foot and 
uh, you know, just come together as coaches and, and players and put together a good game plan, execute a good game plan. Well, our, our players see um, what we can do to, to be better, and, um, and it, they're all things that we can control. That's the, that's the good part of it, and their intent to get that in control. Um, and, you know, our, our coaches are are very positive, they're working hard, I, and, and so I think it's, um, you know, going to be a combination of putting all that to, together and playing our best football as we go down the stretch, uh, something we're, we're capable of, uh, of doing and we need to do.